everybody, welcome back. It's AGT time. Woo! Uh, see, we're in episode five, week five. I'm thinking this looks like it's gonna still be more auditions. I'm not entirely sure. Actually, I'm pretty sure if I remember the trailer from last week. So I don't know. It was on at a special time. I didn't get to catch it. I'm about to watch it on Hulu. I just finished my coffee and stuff. Hopefully, I can put this together and get it out in time for you guys today. If not, it'll be out tomorrow. Um, you won't know unless it's today or tomorrow. Today means Wednesday. Tomorrow means Thursday. Hopefully, Wednesday. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I gotta go out to dinner with uh, Marianne's people. But yeah, uh, last week was pretty cool. Um, it was, well, last week was kind of weak, actually. I love the comedian. I love the NFL magician, but I mean, it was just a bunch of singers outside of that, mostly. There was those couple of adorable kids playing the piano. That's pretty sweet. And the uh, danger something, dangerous moves, whatever, the knife throwers, that was pretty sweet, too. So we'll see more of that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess everybody's out of golden buzzers, so I don't know what the deal is. This is going to be like the strange acts and maybe the danger acts, so... I have no idea, um, <laughs> but I'm about to go find out, and then I'm going to come back and, you know, I'm going to tell you what I liked, what I didn't like. You know the drill. This is how it works. This is how it goes. So let's get on with the show. Let's watch. Okay, so uh, before it got started, actually, the stuff with the Humvee and the tiny car, that was pretty cool. I mean, Howie and Simon looked pretty damn ridiculous in that tiny car, but that was actually a nice little fun opening, you know. I just thought it was cute, and then they show up late and nobody's there, so awesome. Okay, then we had 18-year-old Ryan Beard, who was homeschooled and joked about never had a, having a girlfriend, then did this song, Ladies Man, and I'm like, this kid's kind of charming, maybe he should be a stand-up comedian, and then it turns out his song was actually, like, kind of a parody that was pretty damn clever, so, you know, like, I love the stuff about his prom and his brother, I mean, he didn't miss a beat with some of that stuff, so I like that he's kind of a comedian song parody guy, um, I think maybe if he actually incorporated more intentional stand-up, then uh, that's maybe a cool route he could go as an act, but um, I like what he's doing, so I'll be interested to see more. Uh, it could be, could be pretty cute and charming, so, you know, it'll be interesting. He'll have a different perspective being homeschooled than, than a common kid, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, he was it was interesting so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more. All right, then we had one of, uh, first one of many, many montages where we had, uh, what is it, Namsami, a magician named Joe? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. They didn't show me enough to know if it would have been entertaining or not, but uh, it looked like it could have at least been entertaining to watch on the show, even if they don't let him through, which I'm thinking they did not. Yeah, they did not. Um, then there was also this magician who was doing like floating lollipop thing and candy and stuff. That looked like it could have been cool, but they were saying it wasn't big enough an act, and I could maybe, from what little they show, I could probably see that and agree with it. Then there was uh, Lee Hopes and Mamata, escape artist thing. You know, I mean, it just looked kind of typical. So, you know, and that led into uh, Caden and Brooklyn Bat Rocket. I didn't quite catch their name. They said it a few times, but I didn't quite see it, so I don't know if I'm saying it right. But as a brother and sister, young kid, mag magic team, I mean, they're kind of cute because they're kids and everything. Um, you know, the stall of the lady in half trick at first is kind of dull, and I'm like, the box is made of cardboard and taped at the seam. The chainsaw chain wasn't even running. I'm not sure how you cut through the tape with it. I don't know. Um, but then what actually made it is they pull off the boxes and you see the two halves in there and you know you don't see where they're hiding under there I'm sure ma mirrors or whatever however they do the trick so that was pretty cool although to me it looked like the bottom half was much older than, than the actual sister's top half so I don't know but anyways it's kind of cute it'll be kind of neat to see where it goes I don't think that's going to be an act that'll be in the show for very long but you know I mean I could be wrong so we'll see won't we now we had our second montage an animal montage uh, some magician dude like had Mel B stick her hand in a paper bag full of snakes that's that's not cool not cool at all I'd be so pissed like I would be uh, that show would have to be paying me like hazard pay for that shit and there was some kind of like duck act like a duck circus act or something I would have like just seen that just out of morbid curiosity I'm sure it wasn't any good but I'd be curious to see it then we had Patrick and his dog Ginger and what was interesting about this is we had a sob story but it was the dog sob story so that's kind of different I don't know that I've ever experienced that um, I thought well it's kind of a typical dog uh, act but the balancing on the wire and then doing all the backflips and stuff that's actually pretty cool but I'm not really I don't, I don't can this really go anywhere I mean can they make it a bigger act it, it, I don't I don't know maybe they hit maybe they held stuff back I don't know I just don't really see it getting any bigger than it was but um, you know I mean it was worth watching I enjoyed it the first time so then we had some Arkansas choir that apparently was really good. I thought we were going into a third montage, but really it was, I mean, it was kind of montage but it wasn't a montage of acts, so I can't really count it as a montage. Then we had Ryan Whitney, the Smiths, uh, singers. Uh, they're married. It's kind of romantic, actually. You can see definitely the love, particularly in the guy's eyes. Uh, reminds me of me with Mary, like, being all over her and stuff. But um, but uh, they are originally background singers for a lot of major artists. And to me, I kind of felt that in their performance. Like, when they were kind of soloing, it wasn't as strong to me as when they were, like, harmonizing with each other and supporting each other vocally. Um, but, you know, to me, it was a little sloppy when they weren't singing in harmony. 
But it, apparently I'm wrong and the judges loved it, so they sent them through and uh, they're charming, so I'm, I'm excited to see a bit more of them. I'm, I'm cool with that. And I love that uh, Rye has uh, crab man's uh, hair. That's always fun. Uh, my name is Earl Joke. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> All right, now we're into our third, possibly fourth montage where uh, we had acrobat, uh, acrobat ballerinas and they looked like they might have actually been kind of cool. And uh, you know, and then we kind of did this whole clown montage -y thing. So we had Jolly Cat the clown. That was really bad. Yeah, I would have X'd him too. And uh, but then we had like this clown in a box magician act. Like they're pulling this clown doll out of a box, but it's not really a doll. It's a person and contortion. I thought that actually might have been kind of cool. I don't know that it would have been something I would have sent through to see more of. But I think that would have been a neat act to just actually see the whole thing. It would have been a kind of a fun reveal. Which led into Richie the Barber, uh, Richard Espinito or something like that. Um, yeah, there's uh, a tatted, there's the clown with all the tattoos on his face, so he's a permanent clown. Um, it really, it reminded me a lot of like Steve O, who I do know, I know went to clown school and was probably a better clown, but there's just something about his energy that reminded me of that. Um, so I wasn't sure what to expect, and then he starts rapping, and it's just really bad rapping, like trips over his unicycle. Uh, it just, you know, I don't know. It was, it was actually, I really think all the idea of it was kind of cool, but it was just very poorly executed. The guy seemed like a nice enough guy, so I kind of hated to see him get all sh uh, X'd off or whatever. I think I only got one X, though. I don't remember exactly, but, uh, but yeah, no, I had to, yeah, that one's like, okay, yeah, get out of here. Give him the hook, you know, yeah, mm, no. Then we had Annie and Andre, and they're like, trapeze artist without the trapeze, I guess is the best way to explain it, kind of acrobatics. Uh, she'd even fallen and broken her spine at one point and somehow recovered from that, so that's pretty cool right there. But um, actually, this was kind of thrilling. I think once they start getting a budget, this could go somewhere interesting. Like, I'm really seeing like a lot of pyro and stuff, you know, and her like flipping from place to place to place and everything. So there's potential for that to get really cool. Um, I know Mary talks a lot about sometimes she'd like to see some of these acts get paired up and have to do an act together. I would like to see that, uh, that uh, knife drawing act that was really good from last week uh, pair up with this. Like, she's, you know, so this lady, Annie's getting flipped around through the air while the dude is like throwing knives at her and barely missing her. I think that would be a lot of fun, actually, so. <laughs> And we had another montage, number four, number five, I'm losing track. This guy, Mayor Ritter? I don't, I didn't quite catch his name, I don't need to. Competitive and disgusting food eater? I mean, seriously, really? No, no, get out of here with that. Um, then we had a guy who was like painting his pictures with his tongue, so I'm like, mm, yeah, and then they saw the painting, they're like, nope. Uh, so yeah, I can kind of see that. Which leads into Dan Meyer, uh, 59, he's a sword swallower. Um, I, it's not my kind of thing. It's just kind of the same thing over and over and over. And that's kind of what I was feeling about this act. And then it was weird because they went to break in the middle of his audition, which is not something they frequently do. It does happen every now and then. And then he came back and basically put a sword with a harness thing in his mouth and pulled a car. So that was actually kind of impressive. Again, I mean, where do you go from there though? I mean, how do you actually top that? I, I, I don't see how you top that at all. Uh, maybe I just don't, I don't have the creativity for how to do sword swallowing acts. So. I don't know, I guess we're just gonna have to see in the future. See what we get, right? And now we have another montage. And this entire segment from commercial to commercial was a montage. So I'm like, Jesus, this is like the montage episode. Montage and singers, pretty much. Uh, but first up we had Southern Dance Academy, which looked like, like a hip hop, river dance, tap dancing thing. So that was kind of weird. I would have liked to seen that just to find out how weird it actually was. Then Bob and Trish, knife juggling, unicycle, fireworks, fire breathing, I don't know, it was like too much, man. It's like too over the top and silly, but they apparently went through, so we'll see more of them in the future possibly, so we'll see where that goes. Which led to uh, Brent Brown, 14 year old singer who looks nowhere near 14. Um, I, they apparently liked her. Uh, I did not, her voice sounded really nasally to me and really too high pitched, but I mean, again, it's, you know, singing music's very subjective, so that's just my opinion. Although, knowing this show, since she's a young singer, I'm surprised they didn't give her a golden buzzer. If they had one to give, they probably would've. Then we had Sophie Dossie, if I caught it. I didn't quite catch her name. She's like 14. She was doing all these contortions and stuff, which is not really my thing, but she did bring a lot of showmanship to that kind of thing. It wasn't like, just look at me contort. She really kind of put a show on. And then like she bent over backwards and fed herself an apple with her feet. That was pretty cool. But the archery with the bent over backwards feet thing, actually firing off a bow and arrow, that was pretty sweet. So um, as far as those kind of acts go, this is one of the best ones I've seen. So again, with a production budget, it could be pretty thrilling. I don't know. I don't know where she'll go but she went through and we will find out. Then there was another montage. We had these dancing friends. I don't know, just more of the same. But then this uh, jump rope group, that, that actually looked like a lot of fun. I would like to have seen more of that. I think they went through, so maybe we will. Then we had 54-year-old 54, 54 Christopher, who uh, was dressed as an Indian, kind of a, a, a stereotype 
offensive kind of Indian, but kind of new is going to be village people. And honestly, where I watch this on Hulu, where I was delayed, um, the thumbnail showed what his actor's going to be, so I wasn't terribly surprised when he pulls out that big puppet rig with the four other village people. And of course, they did YMCA. Um, I mean, it's entertaining. We've seen it before. It's not the greatest thing in the world. The crowd was really into it, but I think they were more into the song and the actual performance. But the guy seems nice, and he seems charming, so I'm, I'm okay with seeing a little bit more. And I think Heidi actually sold me on it more than anything when she turned to Mel B and was like, maybe he'll do the Spice, Spice Girls next, because that I would actually love to see, like him dressed as Mel B and doing the rest of the Spice Girls. That would, I, I, yeah, I, I'm glad they sent him through for that alone. So hopefully that will happen. That would be an awesome plan. All right, then for our last act of the act of the night, surprise, it was a singer, Brian Justin Crum. Um, look, he's got a sob story. It's a common sob story. He uh, did a Queen song, which is not something you tackle unless you're great. Uh, they loved him. I didn't really care for his performance. I thought it was too show-offy. It's too, hey, look at me. It's way too high-pitched and nasally. I think there are some songs that, I don't want to sound like an old man, but they don't really need any improving, really. I mean, you can make it your own a little bit, but he was trying way too hard to turn this into something it's not. I got a buddy, uh, a theater buddy, Carl, who does a lot of karaoke, and he nails Queen Freddie Mercury. I mean, he doesn't like, you know, he doesn't try to be Freddie Mercury. He just nails those songs. I think he was way better than this kid. So, I mean, I'm not trying to be down on the kid. Seems nice enough and everything, but it just really didn't do it for me, and I was kind of surprised how much they loved him, but... You know, I don't know. Maybe we'll get more in the future. Maybe he'll tone it down a little bit because way too much. Oh, 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 and it, like he didn't really have range. Everything was up in like this high octave. It wasn't like going, you know, the way Mercury can go kind of low and up and everything and all over the place. But again, subjective, my opinion, which is what this review recap thing is all about. It's about how I feel about the show and sometimes Mary and Mike. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, we all have our own opinions and that is totally fine. So now I want to hear your opinions. Let's talk about it down in the comments. What acts did you like? Did you not? like? Do you mostly agree with me? Do you uh, have a different uh, uh, perspective or appreciation for some of these acts? Let me know. Comment away. Let's geek out about it. Other than that, love to get that thumbs up of encouragement. It's always encouraging. Uh, subscribe if you're new here. We do all kinds of fun, nerdy, geeky stuff every single day on the Eric Butch channel. Of course, share with your friends, because if you're cool, they're cool. We should all be partying together. And, uh, you know, if you love this channel, you want more, you don't get enough of the free stuff here, go check out my link to Patreon. You might like what you find there. There's some cool extra stuff. You maybe be really into it if you're one of my major, like, 1% of my subscriber base that is a super fan. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to get on out of here. And uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm going out to uh, an awesome dinner with Mary and some of my dad's friends. So, yay. Good, because that singing couple made me really want to see Mary. So, all right. Well, I'm going to get out of here and uh, go shower and get ready. And I'll see you guys later. Later.